Did you want something, Ken? No, I'll just. Okay. Hey, you're next. Joshua, chapter 1, starting in verse 1. Now after the death of Moses, the servant of Yahweh, it came to pass that Yahweh spoke unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I do give the, to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. From the wilderness of this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea towards the going down of the sun, shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life, as I was with Moses. So I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Be strong and of good courage. For unto this people shall thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou may observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not it to the right hand or to the left, that thou may prosper whatsoever thou goes. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou may observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For Yahweh thy Elohim is with thee wheresoever you go. We must have courage to move forward. And what keeps us from doing so? Obstacles. Now, this reading we just did, in Joshua chapter 1, verse 1 through 19, there are six, six obstacles that may keep us from moving forward. The obstacle, days gone by, the days gone by obstacle that may keep us from moving forward, dimensions keeps us from moving forward, deficiencies keeps us from moving forward, Distresses keeps us from moving forward. Distractions keeps us from moving forward. And delinquencies keep us from moving forward. You know, there's a story about a boy named Scott in senior high school. And they were required to take CPR course. And the class used this well-known mannequin victim, Rescue Ann, for practice. Scott's group model was legless to allow it for storage in a carrying case. The class went off in groups to practice, and the instructor said, uh, inst and as instructed, one of Scott's classmates gently shook the dial and asked, are you all right? He then puts his ear over the mannequin's mouth to listen for breathing. <clears throat> Suddenly he turns to the instructor and he exclaimed, she says she can't feel her legs. <laughs> But the person we are studying could have easily posed the earlier question, you think you have problems? The man is Joshua. To fully understand Joshua's situation, we need to go back to, to, in time to the book of Numbers. So, Numbers chapter 13, starting in verse 1. Joshua and Caleb had been minority voices when it had come time for the promised land. Numbers 13, And Yahweh spoke unto Moses, saying, Send thou men, that they may search the land of Canaan, which I give unto the children of Israel. Of every tribe of their fathers shall you send by man, every one a ruler among them. And Moses, by the commandment of Yahweh, sent them from the wilderness of Paran, all those men were heads of the children of Israel. These were the names of the tribes of Reuben, 
Sham Mua, the son of Zakur, of the tribe of Simeon, Shaphat, the son of Hori, of the tribe of Judah, Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, of the tribe of Issachar, Igal, the son of Joseph, of the tribe of Ephraim, Ashni, Ashi, the son of Nun, of the tribe of Benjamin, Palti, the son of Raphu, of the tribe of Zebulun, Gadiel, the son of Sodi, of the tribe of Joseph, namely the tribes of Manasseh, Gadi, the son of Chushi, of the tribe of, tribe of Dan, Amiel, the son of Gamieli, of the tribe of Asher, Shethur, the son of Michael, of the tribe of Naphtali, Nabi, the son of Vush, Vushshi, of the tribe of Gad, Geuel, the son of Machai, these are the names of the men which Moses sent to spy out the land. And Moses called Ashi, the son of Nun, Joshua. Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan and said unto them, Get you up this way southward, go up into the mountain and see the land. What is it is, what it is, and the people that dwell therein, whether they be strong or weak, few or many. And what the land is that they dwell in, whether it be good or bad. And what cities they be that they dwell in, whether it's tents or in a stronghold. And what the land is, whether it be fat or lean, whether there be wood therein or not. And be you of good courage and bring of the fruit of the land. Now the time was the time of the first ripe grapes. So they went up and searched the land from the wilderness of Zen to, unto Rehab, as men came to Hamath, and they ascended by the south and came unto Hebron, where Ahiman, Shishai, and Tal Talmai, the children of, en of Enak, were. Now Hebron was built seven years before Zoan in Egypt. And they came unto the brook of Eshkol and, and cut down from there a branch with one cluster of grapes, and they bare it between two upon a staff, and, and they bought of the pomegranates and of the figs. The place was called the Brook of Eshkol because of the cluster of grapes which the children of Israel cut down from there. And they returned from searching of the land after forty days, and they went and came to Moses and to Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel unto the wilderness of Paran, to Kadesh, <coughs> and brought back word unto them and unto the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. And they told him and said, We came unto the land where thou sent us, and surely it is flows with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled and very great. Moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, and the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men that went up with him said, We be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than, than we. And they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land, though through which we have gone to search it, is a land that eats up the inhabitants thereof. And all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. Numbers 14, verse 1, And all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried, and the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron. And the whole congregation said unto them, Would Elohim that we had died in the land of Egypt, or would Elohim we had died in this wilderness. Wherefore has Yahweh brought us into this land to fall by the sword, that our wives and our children should be a prey? Were it not better for us to return unto Egypt? And they said one to another, Let us make a captain, and let us return unto Egypt. 
Then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before all the assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel. And Joshua the son of Nun, and Caleb the son of Jephunneth, which were of them that searched the land, rent their clothes. And they spoke unto all the company of the children of Israel, saying, The land which we pass through to search it is an exceedingly good land. If Yahweh delights in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it to us, a land which flows with milk and honey. Only we bear not against Yahweh, neither fear you the people of the land, for they are bread for us. Their defense is departed from them, and Yahweh is with us. Fear them not. But all the congregation bade stone them with stones. And the glory of Yahweh appeared in the tabernacle of the congregation before all the children of Israel. And Yahweh said unto Moses, How long will this people provoke me? How long will it be ere before they believe me. For all the sights which I have showed them among them, I will smite them with the pestilence and disinherit them, and will make of thee a great nation and mightier than they. Moses said unto Yahweh, Then the Egypt Egyptians shall hear it. For thou brought us up this people in the, thy might from among them, and they will tell it to the inhabitants of this land. For they have heard that thou, Yahweh, art among this people, that thou, Yahweh, art seen face to face, and that thy cloud stands over them, and that thou goes before them by day, by daytime in a pillar of, of a cloud and in a pillar of fire by night. Now if thou kills all this people as one man, then the nations which have heard the fame of thee will speak, saying, Because Yahweh was not able to bring this people into the land which he swore unto them, therefore he has slain them in the wilderness. And now I beseech thee, let the power of my Lord be great, according as thou hast spoken, saying, Yahweh is long-suffering and of great mercy, forgiven iniquity and transgressions, and by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation. Pardon, I beseech thee, the iniquities of this people, according unto thy greatness of thy mercy. And as thou hast forgiven this people from Egypt even until now, and Yahweh said, I have pardoned according to, to thy word, but as, but as truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of Yahweh. Because all these men which have seen my glory and my miracles, which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness, and have tempted me now these ten times, and have not hearkened to my voice, surely they shall not see the land which I swear unto their fathers. Neither shall any of them that provoked me see it. But my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit with him, and has followed me fully, him will I bring into the land wherein to he went, and his seed shall possess it. Now the Amalekites and the Canaanites dwelt in the valley. Tomorrow turn you and get you into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. And Yahweh spoke unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, how long shall I bear with this evil generation, congregation, which murmur against me? I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel, which they murmur against me. Say unto them, As truly as I live, says Yahweh, as you have spoken in my ears, so will I do to you. Your carcasses shall fall in this wilderness, and all that were numbered of you, according to your whole number, from twenty years old and upward, which have murmured against me, Doubtless you shall not come into the land, concerning which I swear to make you dwell therein, save Caleb the son of Jephunneth and Joshua the son of Nun. But your little ones, which you said should be a prey, them will I bring in, and they shall know the land which you have despised. But as for you, your carcasses, they shall fall in the wilderness, and your children shall wander in the wilderness forty years and bear your whoredoms until, until your carcasses be wasted in the wilderness. After the number of days in which you search the land, even forty days, each day for a year shall you bear your iniquities, even forty years, and you shall know my breach of promise. I, Yahweh, have said, I will surely do it unto all this evil congregation that are gathered together against me. In this wilderness they shall be consumed, and they there they shall die. 
And the men which Moses sent to search out the land, who returned and made all the congregation to murmur against him by bringing up a slander upon the land, even those men that did bring up the evil report upon the land died by the plague before Yahweh. But Joshua the son of Nun and Caleb the son of Jephunneh, which were of the, these, the men that went to search the land, lived still. Moses told these sayings unto all the children of Israel, and the people mourned greatly. And they rose up early in the morning and, and got them up into the top of the mountain, saying, Lo, we be here, and will go up unto the place which Yahweh has promised, for we have sinned. And Moses said, Wherefore now do you transgress the commandment of Yahweh? But it shall not prosper. Go not up. For Yahweh is not among you, that you be not smitten before your enemies. For the Amalekites and the Canaanites are there before you, and you shall fall by the sword, because you are turned away from Yahweh. Therefore, Yahweh will not be with you. But they presumed to go up unto the top, hilltop. Nevertheless, the Ark of the Covenant of Yahweh and Moses departed not out of the camp. Then the Amalekites came down, and the Canaanites, which dwelt in the hill, and smote them, and discomforted them, even unto Hormah. So here's the quick review. What I just read, Israel came to the end of their travels at the Sinai Peninsula. They, they came to a place called Kadesh Barnea. It is at this place that Moses appointed 12 men to spy out the land. Joshua was one of these men. For 40 days they traveled and investigated the length and breadth of the land, and when they returned they all agreed that the land was truly wonderful. It was a land of milk and honey. But 10 of the spies gave a discouraging report. They said that the enemy cities with their armies were too great. They would be like grasshoppers to these people. There was no way that the people of Israel would be strong enough to defeat them. Joshua and Caleb, though, said such a report was a bunch of nonsense. If they trusted Yahweh, move forward and took the land and they were instruct as they were instructed, and they would be victorious. Now get this in your mind. We have the cloud by day hanging over them. At night they had a cloud, a pillar of fire. Every day. They walked through the they got out of Egypt. All these miracles and they still refuse to believe this. So guess who the people listen to? The majority view. So for their lack of faith and courage, the people of Israel were left to wander in the wilderness for 40 years. This decision on the part of the people was an act of rebellion in Yahweh's judgment. Yahweh would not have a people that refused to trust him enter into the promised land. Do you trust Yahweh when he says you can come to my kingdom and he tells you how? It's still an important lesson for us today. We must have the courage to move forward. We are walking to his kingdom. We are learning. But what is it that holds us up? What keeps us from doing so? Well, these, here's the six obstacles I want to cover that are in the Joshua reading chapter 1, verse 1 through 19. The first obstacle that may keep us from moving forward is the days gone by. You find this in verse 1 in the first part of 2. After the death of Moses, the servant of Yahweh, Yahweh said to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, Moses, my servant, is dead. Immediately at the beginning of this historical account, Joshua is faced with this alarming reality. It is hard to live up to the past. It was now time to take the role of leadership that once belonged to Moses. This was no easy task. 
Moses had certainly been larger than life. Joshua now is going to replace this beloved and inspired leader. How could he possibly fill those shoes? But even more so, would the people follow him? Would they be able to forget the past and actually move forward? There's a story about years ago about a thunderstorm that swept through a southern Kentucky uh, and at a farm where the clay pool forebears had lived for six generations. In the orchard there was a wind blew over an old pear tree that had been there as long as anyone could remember. John Claypool's grandfather was grieved to lose the tree on which he had climbed as a boy and whose fruit he had eaten all his life. A neighbor came by and said, Doc, I'm really sorry to see your pear tree blowing down. What are you going to do? Grandfather, the grandfather paused for a moment. And then he said, I'm going to pick the fruit and burn what's left. And the grandfather teaches us a lesson here. We remember the past. We rejoice in the past. but we do not long for the past. Instead, we do the work of the present and move forward. For Joshua, Moses was dead, but Yahweh's purpose was very much alive. Yahweh did not want him standing around. It wasn't a time to be thinking, we will never have another man like Moses. It was time to keep building. It was time to move forward. There's a man by the name of John Wesley and on his grave he's got God buries his workman but his work goes on. The second obstacle that may keep us from moving forward is the dimensions. The second part of verse 2 up to 5, verse 5. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people into the land that I am giving to them, to the people of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I will have given to you, just as I promised to Moses. From the wilderness of this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites and the great sea towards the going down of the east, <clears throat> the sun shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Just as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor or forsake you. Does that ring a bell? Do you remember what somebody else said that? I will not leave you or nor forsake you. You sure? Yahweh gives to Joshua the same view he had given to Moses. He gazes beyond what is now Jordan. He gazes beyond what is now Lebanon. Yahweh says, it is yours for the taking. It had to be quite the scene. It was huge. Yahweh says, I'm giving you the kingdom. All you have to do is move forward. Yeshua said, I'll be with you till the end of time. When, more, one, when two more of you are gathered together, I will be here. One, two, you're the others, or more. He's here. We don't know. Sometimes it takes, the task seems so big. And we don't know if Joshua hesitated at this point, but we couldn't blame him if he did. It's easy easily could have seemed like it was just too much. Yet Joshua must have remembered what it had been like 40 years earlier when the people hesitated. We just read it, 13 and 14, chapter 13 and 14. 
they grew fearful. They saw the size of their enemies and they panicked. That had to have been a disaster. They were going to be able to do this. Why? Because Yahweh was with them. Why are we going to be able to get to the kingdom? Because Yeshua is with us. You see, knowing Yahweh is with you helps cut those immense obstacles down to size. When Yahweh is with you, it is enough. The third obstacle that may keep us from moving forward is deficiencies. Chapter 6, uh, verse 6, the first part. I want to concentrate on the first two words of verse 6. Be strong. Why is that? Why is Yahweh telling us to be strong? I think that it is simply this. We can too easily lose our resolve in the face of the enemy. You know, it's been said, when in charge, ponder, when in trouble, delegate, and when in doubt, mumble, mumble, mumble. I don't think the last statement is what Yahweh had in mind for Joshua, and I don't think he has it in mind for us either. He was to be strong and firm, not weak. Taking on the enormous task was going to take perseverance. When we take on this enormous task to get to Father Yahweh's kingdom, it's going to take a long time, our whole life, and it's going to take perseverance. Do not give up. This was not going to happen overnight. Becoming possessor of the promised land was going to take a long time. Our promised land is the kingdom of Yahweh. If he was to be successful leader, Joshua needed to possess an absolute resolve. Now even though Yahweh tells Joshua to be strong, it was not going to be because of his own power. The secret of his success was not his strength but in the fact that he would be dependent on Yahweh's strength. Success would come because Yahweh was with him. Joshua could be strong, he should be strong because the battle was Yahweh's. He could count on Yahweh's strength and his assistance. We can too. After all, this was Yahweh's work, not ours, not Joshua's. The fourth obstacle that may keep us from moving forward is the distresses. We also find it in verse 6. Be strong and courageous, for you shall cause this people to inherit the land that I swore to their fathers to give them. Now ask, us, ask a similar question. Why does Yahweh tell us to be courageous? It's because we get scared a lot. We fear the process and the consequences. And as a result, fear can paralyze us. We're afraid if we tell somebody the truth, what someone might say. You tell people out there that don't believe the Bible, what it says, they make fun of you. You're crazy. I just heard on a, a, a uh, interview yesterday that al almost all news people will say they're atheists. Anyone you go to the mm -hmm. colleges will say they're atheists. All the professors and school teachers and whatnot. All the government officials will not. If you say anything but atheists, they look at you funny. Fear can paralyze us. There's a story about a sergeant in a parachute regiment. Doug took part in a several nighttime exercise, and once he was seated next to a lieutenant fresh from jump school, he was quiet, 
sad and looked a bit pale. So Doug struck up a conversation. Scared, Lieutenant, he asked. The lieutenant replied, no, just a bit apprehensive. Doug asked, what's the difference? The lieutenant replied, that means I'm scared with the university education. <laughs> Whether you feel apprehensive, anxious, scared, or petrified, Yahweh calls on us to have courage. Yahweh repeats this command over and over because we are so easily frozen by fear. What are they going to think about us? The task Yahweh has given can seem so massive. There is a definite temptation to run the other way. Who ran the other way? Jonah? What only, what only verse did our Savior, what only saying did the son of Yahweh say would be the proof of who he was? Three days, three nights in the belly of the earth, just like Jonah was in the way, or the fish, the great fish. Perhaps we're afraid of embarrassment or failure. Perhaps we don't like being labeled. Perhaps we don't like being in a minority. Perhaps we don't like rejection and hostility. Whatever fills us with fear, we are to stop ourselves and find new courage. It is available. It's available because Yahweh provides it. Yahweh is with us. Therefore, we will not be found drifting aimlessly along with the crowd. We will move forward no matter what distresses us. We will move forward because Yahweh has promised to be with us. Like father, like son, he's promised to be with us. I'm sorry for you if you don't believe. He promised. The fifth obstacle that may keep us from moving forward is distractions. Verse 7, only be strong and be very, very courageous, being careful to do according to all the law that Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn it to the right hand or to the left, that you may have good success wherever you go. General John Gavin, who was the Supreme Allied Commander in Europe and the Commander-in-Chief of the U.S. European Command was asked what it was like to be in charge of so many various forces. His response went like this. I often feel like the director of a cemetery. I have a lot of people under me, but nobody listens. Joshua had to be concerned about the same thing. Would people listen? Would they listen to him? Would they listen to or be distracted in the midst of conflict? It's a legitimate concern. It's easy to wander from the main theme. The description that is given here to Joshua is really a moral one. He was not to get off track. He was to observe Yahweh's commandments faithfully, for this requirement required greater moral strength and courage than proving oneself in the battlefield. Joshua had to keep his focus. You have to keep your focus on the law, the words that come out of the mouth of the Creator himself. We must remember this if we are to move forward as Yahweh calls. The world offers plenty of distractions in terms of our profession or our desires. Nevertheless, our pleasures must take a lesser place if we are to have true success. Sixth obstacle that may keep us from moving forward 
is delinquencies, chap, uh, verse 8 and 9. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous? Do not be frightened, and do not be dismayed. For Yahweh your Elohim is with you wherever you go. Have you ever noticed that? We can be afraid to ask directions. That's why I got a GPS in my car when I need it. It tells me where to go. Simply Joshua was not to be caught being stupid. This meant that his mind was to be exercised by Yahweh's word. Through continual meditation, Joshua was to delve deeper into the meaning of Yahweh's word. Then he would understand its spiritual depth and be able to follow it meticulously without neglecting the smallest part. Are we not supposed to follow in Yeshua's footsteps? Did he not study and delve into it meticulously? As a result, he would know Yahweh better. We would know Yahweh better if we studied his word. He would know what Yahweh desires and have a clearer understanding of his call on his own life. This is so important to us as well. If we are to possess the courage to move forward, we must not rely on our own wisdom. We cannot rely on our own strength and assets. Instead, we must study the word in the realization that if we do not study Yahweh's word, every challenge that comes our way will seem impossible. A man by the name of George MacDonald once wrote, I find the doing the, of the will of God leaves me no time for disputing his plan. You know, there should never be discussion about whether to follow Yahweh or not. Who in their right mind would say that? I wonder if I should follow him or not. The people of Israel were going to find out that Yahweh does not walk out on his promises. We are promised that he will take us to the kingdom if we follow him. Amen. Move forward. Don't be afraid. Be courageous. The same is true for us, just like Yeshua, Joshua back then. And if Yahweh doesn't walk out on his promises to us, we shouldn't walk out on them either. We should be faithful in moving forward because Yahweh will be faithful. It's interesting to note that the succeeding generations would not be faithful. They would not follow Yahweh's will. They would not move forward and complete Yahweh's will for them. The book of Judges characterizes it like this. Everyone did what was right in their own eyes. Sound for me? They rejected the objective standard of righteousness given by Yahweh and instead chose to follow a moral and spiritual relativism. If it feels good, do it. Today is what's going on. They refuse to follow Yahweh's morals. And where do you find Yahweh's morals? In the Bible. As believers in Yahweh, we must not allow that to happen. Instead, we must remember and apply this following. When Yahweh promises his presence, it is always enough. The sole source of our strength and our courage is Yahweh's presence. Our trust in Him is to be unshakable, no matter how great the task may seem. So, dear people, 
Do not pray for easy lives. Rather pray to be stronger for Yahweh's sake. Do not pray for tasks equal to your powers. Instead pray for power equal to your task. Be strong and courageous and move forward. Do not let the past get in the way, but rather let it be a foundation for more growth in the kingdom of Yahweh. Be strong and courageous and move forward. Do not let the size of the task get in your way. Instead, be excited that Yahweh has so much for you to accomplish. Stopping right there. Yahweh says, in heaven, your name, I want you. That's got to raise the hair in the back of your neck. I want Frank on my team. I want him in the kingdom. I want Kenyon in the kingdom. He wants all of you in the kingdom. He named your name in heaven, in his kingdom. Be strong and courageous and move forward. Do not be distracted. Keep your focus and realize that Yahweh, because Yahweh is Elohim, there is no challenge that cannot be accepted and accomplished. You've been challenged to get into Yahweh's kingdom. You can do it because Yahweh is with us. He will help us. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Messiah Yeshua throughout all generations forever and ever. Yeah, we bless.